And the book is basically a love story woven throughout our first year as a couple together, dealing with Michael's double cancer um, diagnosis uh, and putting him in remission after a certain amount of time, which was really only six months after he found out that he had the first cancer. Uh, and it was without no chemo, no radiation. He didn't have to lose his bladder, his prostate. And uh, I tell a whole story in the first part of the book about seeing a doctor who wanted us to take a pump and you know, anytime we wanted to have sex and everything else. So that didn't have to happen. No pump necessary. And he's been in remission 12 and a half years now. Pretty long, yeah. <laughs> There's a few of them actually. And uh, I was laying there with morphine. So it felt pretty good as they were poking me. But when they got my right. lung and punctured my lung, that was not too good. Yeah. Well, well, we were the kind of couple that always was making lemonade out of a lemon. They punctured his lung in Chicago, so he couldn't fly. I was in the middle of not only being mom, and it was, you know, Halloween month, but also I was doing a mini series in Sacramento. So I was like all over the country, but it was like, okay, well, we can't fly. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to LA, be with the kids, do the movie, part of the movie, come back to Chicago, and we're going to take a sexy train ride across the country. I wrote, um, I sort of wrote diary sections over the over years before we started writing the book, and then we I had to try and integrate what I'd already written into what into this book and condense it and edit it and whatever. Meanwhile, Mary Lou wrote this extensive outline, which I didn't really follow, unfortunately. Wow. And so um, she had her method and I had my method, and uh, they were very opposite. Um, Let's put it this way. <laughs> We needed a Michael Whisperer, <laughs> our son, Nick. Now, what happened was we, def we definitely have different methods for writing books, but this was my 10th book. And I know that if you write an extensive outline, the book, for me anyway, writes itself. And because I have an unusual memory, I was able to really have like all these details and all of, you know, like, like the out my outline was pages and pages long because I just remembered so much. And then every once in a while, Michael would look over my shoulder and he would say, oh yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of middle-aged men are very set in their ways. Um, they're, they're comfortable in where they are. They don't want to change. And this is where the, the uh, changing normal came from. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to change my normal. Um, my normal had been comfortable for me. Uh, doctors tend to want to return their patients back to normal because I think that's what the patients want and that's what the doctors think the patients want. And, uh, and that's all detrimental to trying to, uh, to beat the cancer. Right. That, once, once he got on board though, he was unbelievable. I mean, I couldn't believe he was trusting me as much as he was because we were a new couple. You know, people said, hey, the guy's got cancer. You've only been dating a couple months. You don't want to bail? And it's like, no, no, no. Are you kidding? Not at all. But this is not a how-to book. This is what we did. But the human body really wants to heal. So the best thing you can do is figure out how your body is best going to heal. Emotionally, physically, mentally, of course. Uh, you know, and just medically and all those different things that people can do. I wish I had the information I have now. I wish I, I could have saved both of my parents' lives. They died very young, which is what propelled me on this journey of health. But anybody who reads this book will hopefully understand that, you know, it's kind of a roller coaster, but, at the, but the end result is, you know, is, is usually what you want. It was just coming out of surgery because they had to go in the side of his body and scoop out the little lung. And, um, you know, I, he saw me as he opened his eyes and he gave me a marriage proposal. Well, you know, there's a big difference in our energies anyway. So, you know, sleepiest, I don't know. I thought that was pretty romantic. It was, it was very romantic. <laughs>